welcome back. And how did you go for the previous section? Did you enjoy learning about the if and else statement and the different types of loops? Well, in this section, we're talking about the fundamentals of R. And what you will find in uh, these tutorials is that R is a bit different to the other programming languages out there. And that is because R was originally designed for mathematicians, statisticians, and people using linear algebra. And that's why it has this whole vectorized approach and feel to it. So you will really have to shift your way of thinking to successfully apply R in your analytical work. And what you'll learn in this section is um, some vectors, vectorized operations, how to use functions in R, and what packages are in R. And those are all the main building blocks of this programming language. So this is quite important uh, stuff and I urge you to really sink in this knowledge because everything we'll learn in this section you will need to be successful in the remaining sections throughout the course. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the first tutorial. Let's dive straight into it. Hello and welcome back to the course on our programming. This is Kirill Eremenko, and I am super excited to have you back here in the course. And what are we talking about today? Well, today we will finally find out what is a vector. We've touched on vectors a little bit in the previous section of the course, and it is time now to finally get it down pat and have a good understanding of what a vector is. In fact, this is going to be a quite a quick tutorial because vectors are not that complicated. Okay, so let's get started. The definition of a vector is a sequence of data elements of the same basic type. The way I imagine a vector is like a horizontal bookshelf with lots of sections. And in each one of these sections, you can put a number. So let's say in the first section, we put 50, second section, 34, 111, and so on. So basically, we're putting numbers into this vector. And there's 10 numbers, and this is a numeric vector. Numeric basically means either integer or double. So basically anything that has a number. So this is a numeric vector of length 10. And if you've studied other programming languages before, then a vector in R is the same thing as an array, for example, in C or C++ or pretty much in any other language. It's just called different. And the name vector comes from a linear algebra because uh, R is a statistical language. It's for mathematicians and statisticians. And there are a lot of concepts that come from linear algebra and one of them is a the name of vector and actually vectors are numerated because a vector is a sequence of data elements or in other words an ordered set it will always have a beginning and an end so in this case it starts with one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and notice the difference here if you studied other programming languages then indexation of arrays normally starts with a zero so in this case, it would be 0 all the way up to 9. But in R, indexation starts with a 1, which makes things a little bit easier, especially if you're just starting out into programming. OK, so that is a numeric vector of length 10. Let's have a look at a different vector. Let's have a look at a character vector of length 7. So a character vector would have character elements in it. And we've already talked about character variables. So there's uh, letter Z. And of course, it has to have quotation marks as any character value, letter F, letter, or the number seven, but represent it as a character. Because remember that a vector can only have data elements of the same type. So even if you tried to put in a seven as a number into a character vector, R would automatically change it for you into a character. So because it can't change a letter into a number, but it can change a number into a character, your uh, resulting vector would, of course, be of characters. And there's a couple more characters. So even multiple letters or a combination of letters and numbers in R is considered to be a character. So this is a vector character vector of length seven. And here is its indexation. Okay, so that's how vectors work. And one final thing I wanted to show you for today. And that is a little secret of R. Okay, let's say you have a number, you have a number, for instance, 27. And we've talked about variables before we've talked about values and uh, how you can store values in variables and so on. And in fact, the secret of R is that even a single number is stored as a vector as a vector of length one. And there you go. That is R's little secret. And uh, we're getting a bit of ahead of ourselves right now. 
Why that is, is kind of a conceptual thing in the background of R, and we'll get back to it further down in the course. But just keep that in mind that everything in R, even a single number or a single character, is always going to be a vector. That's just how this programming language works. And I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial. Until then, happy coding! Hello and welcome back to the course on R programming. I hope you enjoyed the previous tutorial on vectors and today we're going to dive straight into the code and get started on creating some vectors. So let's jump straight into it. Okay, first thing we need to do is we want to give our very first vector name and we're going to be very conventional and we'll call it my first vector. And then we will assign it a value. So what do we want to put in a vector? Well, as we saw previously, a vector is a sequence of elements. And in this case, we want to create a vector of numbers. We want to put some numbers in there. So how do we put them in there? Well, let's start thinking of what numbers we'll put in. Well, let's say we want to put in numbers 3, 45, 56, 732. There we go. So how do we put them all in this vector? Well, I've already put the commas in between them. All we have left to do is we've got to combine them into this vector. And how do we combine numbers into a vector in R? Well, there's a function called C, simply C. I know we have not talked about functions yet and we are already quite actively using them, but that's okay because they're quite intuitive and when we get to functions, we'll be very prepared for that tutorial and it'll allow us to uh, lay the ground rules for functions. But for now, let's just uh, stick to the little things and bits and pieces that we learn about functions. So here we're using a function called C and we're passing this function all of the numbers that we want to put in this vector. You can pass as many as you want or as little as you want. So if we run this line of code, what you will see here is a new object has appeared, my first vector. You can see that it says numeric one to four, meaning that it has four elements and the elements are 3, 45, 56, and 732. So if I print out my first vector now into the console, what will we see? We'll see exactly those numbers. Okay, that's a great start. So now what we want to do is we want to check that thing that we talked about in the previous tutorial, which was the word numeric. So what does it mean? Well, in R, there's a function which is called is.numeric, right? And it allows you to check if an object is numeric. So first we're going to type in my first vector in here. And now we're going to execute that. So as you can see, it returns true, meaning that this object is indeed numeric. All right, so now let's check another thing. Let's see, what did we put in here? Into this vector, it looks like we put in integers, right? These are whole numbers, no decimal points. Let's see if this vector is, is integer, right? So that we'll use a function called is integer, and we'll check my first vector. And let's run this. Interesting, we got false. Why is that? Why do you think we got false here? Can you remember what integers and what how R processes integers? We talked about this in the previous section of the course. Well, the way R processes integers is by default, it will store them as double. They will store them as a number with a decimal point even though it doesn't have a decimal point, but because all operations in R, all mathematical operations in R happen in double mode, R, it's just simpler for R to store any integer as a double right away. So if we check now, is this vector double? So we'll just say is double, and then we'll say my first vector. Let's see what R tells us now. True, indeed, R does store this whole vector as a vector of doubles because it is anticipating that we will require some arithmetic operations down the line. So to mix it up, let's create a vector of true integers this time. We'll say C, and now we'll put in some integers, but remember to put to store an integers an integer, you need to add the letter L on the end. So 12L, let's say 243L, and let's say 0L. Okay, now if we run this code, you will see that here it says int. And bear in mind that this is still also a numeric vector as well. So we can check that. We can say is dot numeric and v2. It is a numeric vector. And that is because of what we discussed, that numeric uh, encompasses both 
integers and doubles. So now if we check is integer and we check v2, you'll see that it's true. And of course is double will be false. Okay, so because it is stored as an integer, and that is because we specified that letter L on the end. And as you can see here, the letter L is not in place anymore, just showing that this is indeed just a way to tell R how to store these variables or these numbers. Okay, so let's continue. Let's see what else we can do with vectors. How about a character vector? We talked about character vectors in the previous tutorial. Let's create a character vector. So let's say V3, vector 3. We can give it any name, actually, whatever name you like. And let's put into this vector the values C, so that's combined, and we'll put in the values A, B23, then we'll say hello, and that's all for now. So let's maybe make this a capital, and let's run this code. So V3, as you can see, has been created. It's a character vector of three elements, one, two, three, and it has those elements. So if I print it out now, I'll get a character vector. Awesome, and what we can do is we can check is character v3. It's true. And just uh, for argument's sake, let's check if it's numeric. It is not numeric. All right. So now let's test that thing that we talked about that a vector can only have data elements of the same basic type. So you cannot mix different types inside one vector, which is a very important thing to remember and also to understand. So let's add, let, let's say a number. So another, the number seven, right? And as we know from here, although it's an integer, it'll be stored as a double. So we expect that we'll have characters and a double in this vector. So if we run this vector now, and then we print it out, you will see that the number seven has actually been converted to a character. And that is because you cannot convert a character to a number, but it is very simple to convert a character or a number to a character. All you have to do is just put quotation marks around it. So it's no longer a number. And therefore, this vector is still a character vector, which we can check here. It's a character vector and it's not a numeric vector. Now, this is an important thing to remember because so you avoid situation like this, where you try to put different elements into one vector. And also it is important to understand because that is like a conceptual fundamental principle of R. It relies very heavily on the fact that within a vector, you can only find data elements of the same basic type. And we'll talk more about this fundamental principle further down in future tutorials, but for now, it's just good to know and to remember. All right, so as you can see, creating vectors isn't that hard. Now let's explore what other ways there are to create vectors. Well, we're going to discuss two more functions, two more functions which are very intuitive and straightforward. One is called sequence, so SEQ, and then the brackets after it, and I'll just put in the name here, sequence, and it's very similar to the operator, which is the colon, which we've been using quite a bit. And the other one is replicate. So REP, and it stands for replicate. All right, so let's start with sequence. Let's say I want to create a sequence of numbers from 1 to 15. In that case, I need to call the sequence function and pass it the parameters 1, 15. So the start of the sequence, comma, the end of the sequence. And if I run this now, what you'll see is that we've got the numbers 1 to 15. Now, what does this remind you of? Doesn't it remind you of 1, 15? This is the expression that we've used so far in the previous tutorials to generate a sequence. And as you can see, the results are exactly the same. So basically 1 colon 15 is identical to sequence 1 comma 15. In fact, it can get a bit confusing. They are so similar that when I was learning R, I used to type in 1 colon 15 instead of 1 comma 15. And it still works. And that confused me a lot because then I thought then you don't need the function around it or the commas is the same as a colon. And uh, that was a long story. I really had to, uh, to take some time and understanding to uh, forget that <laughs> and find out or remember, understand the correct approach. So just remember that inside functions use a comma and then there's this other fast way using a colon. Now, so why would you use sequence if you have the colon version? Well, that is because sequence gives you a bit more flexibility. With sequence, you can say one to 15 and then you can pass an additional parameter which will be the step. So I might say one to 15 with the step of two. And that will give me one, three, five, seven. So it will give me all the odd numbers from one to 15. And you can't do the same thing with the colon. 
Now that is the main difference between the sequence and the colon and plus sequence can give you even more flexibility, but we'll explore that further down the course. Now let's say we want to save a vector that we generate with sequence. We'll say Z and we'll put into this vector a sequence of numbers from one to 15 with a step of four. Let's generate that and let's print Z out. As you can see here, we've generated 1, 5, 9, and 13, and there's no 15. And that is because that's how sequence works. It's a pretty smart function, so it knows that you want numbers between 1 and 15, and if you add 4 on top of 13, you'll get 17, so you kind of get out of that border that you specified, and the sequence won't generate that number. So you will always, you're always guaranteed that you will be between these two numbers, even if the step doesn't fit in perfectly into uh, that those borders that you've created. Okay, so that was sequence for you. Now let's look at the last way of creating vectors that we wanted to cover off today. And that is replicate. So in order to call replicate, we need to type in rep, then we need to specify something that we want to replicate. Let's say we want to replicate number three, and we want to replicate it 50 times. So let's run that what you'll see is the number three has been replicated 50 times. And this is all one very long vector. So I can put in put this vector into a variable or give it a name. And then I'll say rep 350. Right? There we go. So there is D. And there is the vector one to 50. That's how many elements it has. And they're all the number three. By the way, here, you can see that there's a square bracket one, which we've been seeing so far all over the place. But here you have square bracket 37. What does that mean? Well, that means that you have 36 elements up to there. And then this is the 37th, 38th, 39th. So basically, it will just enumerate them for you. So if I say 100, you'll see it will tell you which element you are looking at at the start of that row. All right. And one last thing I wanted to show you is, oh, actually two last things. You can replicate a character, of course. So A for instance, and let's say we want to see it five times. There we go. That's a uh, character vector of five A's. And also uh, what you can do is you can replicate even vectors. So let's create a vector X and we'll put two numbers in there. We'll say 80, 20. And now we want to replicate X 10 times. So there we go. Now we have a vector. So if we put this into vector Y, now we have a vector of 20 elements of 20 numbers and they're 80, 20, 80, 20, 80, 20, and so on. So there we go. That's how you create vectors in R. Those are the many different ways. What we talked about was uh, just the combine function. Uh, we also talked about the sequence function, the rep function, uh, replicate function. And we also learned how to check the types. So is numeric, is integer, is double, and also is character. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Have a play around with that. Practice some vectors. Create some vectors that come into your mind and see how you go. See what different combinations of these functions you can use and what different vectors you can create. Because as I always say, programming is about practicing, practicing and practicing again and experimenting with what you're learning. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, happy coding.